On today's program, I'm talking about, is America in Bible prophecy? And if not, why are we not in Bible prophecy? I'm also talking about a new bombshell report from the U.S. State Department about Iran's nuclear capacity. Plus, I'm answering your questions. Hey, this is the Tipping Point Show, and I'm Jimmy. So glad that you joined me for today. And I want you to know that this podcast is a part of the EXO Podcast Network. We have many other podcasts that you look those up. I think you'll be blessed by them. Let me also say that we have an EXO marriage conference that's coming up in Houston on February the 12th and 13th. To be myself, David and Ashley Willis, Dan Leanne, Tim Ross, Bianca Olhoff, Garrett and Andrea Booth, and more in person. So if you'd like to be a part of this in person, uh, you can go on exomarriage.com forward slash conferences. You can also watch it at home. If you would rather just, if you're not going to be able to attend live, you can watch it there at home or your church can watch it on a simulcast. We would love to have you be a part of our EXO conferences. Really bless you. Uh, if you know someone who needs help in their marriage or they just, you know, would like to come and get blessed, I guarantee it's going to be a great conference. So let me talk in this message today about is America and Bible prophecy? Now, this is one of the main things that I get asked. Uh, is if you look in the Bible, if you look in end times prophecy, is America there? Okay, so I'm going to answer that question. And and I believe that I'll be very specific in answering that question if you have that question. And the other question is, if we're not, okay, then why are we not in Bible prophecy? Some pay, people say, well, because we've been destroyed or something like that. Let me answer that question also. So the thing about Bible prophecy is it geopolitically predicts where nations will be and how they will behave with absolute remarkable accuracy. Okay, now next week I'm going to be talking about China. And China is obviously a massive player on the world scene right now. They're also a player in Bible prophecy. And I'm going to show you that next week. But I'm going to talk about America this week uh, and just different countries over the next several weeks, talking about just different countries, where they are, how they behave, and exactly that they're doing that right now. So how about America? Is America in Bible prophecy? And so let me give you a couple of scriptures here, one that I believe is very specific in that we are in Bible prophecy. This is Ezekiel 38, um, and this is talking about the Gog and Magog War. Many nations here that are involved, Russia, Iran, Syria, Turkey, many nations like that, along with, I believe, the United States. And this is Ezekiel 38 in the latter years. Now, the Old Testament talks about the end times as latter years. In the latter years, you will come into the land of those brought back from the sword and gathered from many people on the mountains of Israel, which had long been desolate. Now, this is talking about today. Um, he's talking Russia, Iran, Gog and Magog. You're going to come and you're going to attack Israel when they come back after many years of being scattered among the nations. You're going to attack them. They were brought out of the nations, and now all of them dwell safely. You will ascend, coming like a storm, covering the land like a cloud. You and all your troops and many people with you, thus says the Lord God, on that day it shall come to pass that thoughts will arise in your mind, and you will make an evil plan. You will say, I will go against a land of unwalled villages. I will go to a peaceful people who dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates to take plunder, to take booty, to stretch out your hand against the waste places that are again inhabited and against a people gathered from the nations who have acquired livestock and goods who dwell in the midst of the land. So here it is. Sheba, Dedan, the mar merchants of Tarshish and their young lions will say to you, have you come to take plunder? Have you gathered your army to take booty? to carry away silver and gold, to take away livestock and goods, to take great plunder. Now, let me stop because I'm going to keep reading here in just a second because I want to tell you when this is going to happen because there's there's a clue here in Ezekiel as to when this is going to happen, the Gog and Magog report. So it says that Russia, uh, which is Gog and Magog, uh, it says uh, Persia, which is Iran, uh, Gomer, which is Turkey, all these different nations, you're going to get it in your minds that you're going to attack Israel. And by the way, we have Russian and Iranian forces on Israel's northern border right now. And Russia and Israel, Russia and Iran are in a pact. They're on the northern border of Israel right now, along with Syrian troops. Turkey is very much involved in this, as are others. So this is, this is happening. So the Bible, you know, 2,500 years ago says, let me just tell you where the countries are going to be and what they're going to be acting like. Russia is going to be a thorn in Israel's side, along with Iran, along with Turkey, along with Syria, all these kind of nations. However, when this Gog and Magog war happens, there's going to be a number of nations that challenge the Gog and Magog coalition. 
And it is Sheba and Dedan. That's the Arabian Peninsula. That's Saudi Arabia. That's Yemen. That's the UAE. That's Qatar. Those are the Gulf states. This is the Arabian Peninsula. And isn't it interesting? These are the states right now coming into the Abraham Accords with Israel. Okay. Saudi Arabia hadn't done it yet, but they're talking. And Saudi Arabia is very pro-U.S., as we know. And so the, the Arabian Peninsula. In other words, and by the way, Saudi Arabia and Iran hate each other. Iran is saying right now they will not go back to the table to discuss their nuclear deal because now this coalition of nations is wanting to bring Saudi Arabia in and, the, and Saudi Arabia and Iran absolutely despise each other. Okay, so they're not friendly. So this this is happening. Okay, it says Sheba Dedan, the merchants of Tarshish and their young lions. Tarshish is England and their young lions are the United States. This is the greatest colony of England previously. Their young lions, this is a biblical way of joining us together with England and saying the U.S., England, and the Arabian Peninsula will challenge the Gog and Magog conspiracy. Isn't it interesting that many of our closest trading partners are in the Arabian Peninsula? The United States has a very close relationship with Saudi Arabia, the UAE, many of those nations, those Gulf states there, we're very close to them. So is Britain. Britain is pro-Israel. United States is pro-Israel. All these nations now are in alignment. Now, I'm saying this, this is the remarkable thing about Bible prophecy, is it is so absolutely specific. So is the U.S. in Bible prophecy? Yes, I believe so, right here. Now, let me keep reading, because I'm going to tell you when this is going to happen. Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say to Gog, thus says the Lord God, on the day when my people Israel dwell safely, okay, that's very important, will you not know it? Then you will come from your place out of the far north, you and many peoples with you. By the way, go on a map, look at Jerusalem, directly north, far north is Moscow, is Russia. Okay. Then you will come from your place out of the far north, you and many peoples with you, all of them riding on horses, a great company and a mighty army. You will come up against my people, Israel, like a cloud to cover the land. It will be in the latter days that I will bring you against my land so that the nations may know me when I am hallowed in you, O God, before their eyes. Remember now, God God destroys these nations when they come down to Israel. Israel does not destroy the Gog and Magog nations. God does to glorify himself. But notice here, it says, when they dwell safely. Okay, this is not in the tribulation. Okay, here, listen, listen to this. This is Ezekiel 39. And God's going to give us a major, major hint here or major, major really revelation of when this is going to happen. And it will come to pass at the same time. When Gog comes against the land of Israel, says the Lord, that my fury will show in my face, for in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath, I have spoken. Surely in that day, in that day, there shall be a great earthquake in the land of Israel, so that the fish of the sea, the birds of the heaven, the beasts of the field, all the creeping things that creep on the earth, and all men who are on the face of the earth shall shake at my presence. The mountains shall be thrown down, the steep places shall fall and every wall shall fall to the ground. I will call for a sword against uh, Gog throughout all my mountains, says the Lord God. Every man's sword will be against his brother, and I will bring him to judgment with pestilence and bloodshed. I will rain down on him and on his troops and on the many peoples who are with him, flooding rain, great hailstones, fire and brimstone, and all that could be talking about some kind of a nuclear exchange. Thus I will magnify myself and sanctify myself and I will be known in the eyes of many nations, then they shall know that I am the Lord. Well, so there are all these nations right now uh, that that are against Israel and, and that are in a coalition, you know, this Gog and Magog coalition. Okay, now, and, and plus you have jihadist uh, Islam. Well, this is God's answer. And God's answer, this is an end time answer. God has put up with it. He's put up with it. Six million Jews were killed. Israel finally gets their nation back. After six million Jews are killed, they're persecuted all over the world. Persecution is increasing in the church. I'm going to be talking about that in a future program. The anti-Semitism is rising in the church today, okay? In America, especially in Europe and around the world, we see hatred of the Jews, which, as I said on our last program, is an end-time sign, okay? But God says here, in that day when all of them are dwelling safely. Well, I've been to Israel. Uh, I'm so sure some of you have been to Israel. There is a wall in Israel, just like there's a wall on the Mexican border between U.S. and Mexico for hundreds of miles. There is a border wall there in Israel, but the but the cities are not walled. 
There is a, it's a, and they're all dwelling safely. Israel's very, very prosperous, by the way. If you haven't been there, it is, it is gorgeous. And they have done a remarkable job with it. They're, they're a major exporter of agricultural produce, of chemicals, of all different kinds of things all over the world. They found natural gas, a massive, massive reserve of natural gas off the Mediterranean coast, which they're now building a pipeline so they can supply that to Europe. And Russia is the number one adversary of that. So when it says here that you're going to come down to take spoil, Israel is a massively resourceful uh, place. When we were there, the Dead Sea has over 1 billion tons of chemicals in it. It is a chemical-rich environment. So Israel's amazing if you've never been there. So they're going to come down when they're at peace. However, God here says, on that day, when Gog and Magog come down, the look on my face is going to change. And no longer is it going to be peace. I'm going to come in my wrath and in my fury. So here's what I believe. I believe this happens around the first, the beginning of the tribulation period of time. In fact, let me just give you a timeline of, of what I believe is going to happen. We're living in a time right now of relative peace. Okay, It's not peace, but it's relative peace compared to what's going to happen in the tribulation. Israel is a land of unwalled villages, and they are dwelling in relative peace right now. Okay, And so I believe that, uh, and I'm going to be talking now in the next segment about Iran's nuclear capabilities. The State Department just made a, a, a remarkable announcement about this, what's about to happen. But I believe that there's going to be a provocation. God says in Ezekiel, I'm going to put a hook in your jaw and draw you down to the mountains of Israel. God is going to provoke them. I believe that is going to be a military confrontation between Israel and Iran. I believe that's going to be the hook in the jaw. That's my personal opinion. When that happens, there's going to be the Gog and Magog war. At the end of the Gog and Magog War, I believe the Antichrist will show up on the scene. Around that period of time will be the rapture of the church. I don't know if it's before then or during it or after it, but around that time, there's the rapture of the church. The Antichrist shows up on the heels of the Gog and Magog War, and he becomes the man of peace. And he brokers a seven-year peace deal or confirms a seven-year peace deal between Israel and the UN, Israel and himself, whoever he represents. And then that begins the tribulation period of time. But there's no doubt about several things. One is, this is a coalition of nations that is on the scene right now. They're all in relationship, and they all hate Israel. Okay, They're all anti-Semitic, number one. Number two, Sheba and Dedan, Tarshish and her young lions are all politically aligned with Israel and not with those other nations, and they exist right now. So the geopolitical landscape is exactly what this says. Okay, is exactly what this says. And there's going to be relative peace, then all heaven breaks loose, and we're going to see the beginning of the tribulation. That's my opinion. But this is the first reference to America in end-time prophecy. Well, are we mentioned again? Maybe. Okay, we're not very prominent. Maybe. Okay, this is Revelation 12. Now, when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness to her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the presence of the serpent. Well, this is Israel. Okay, Israel, this is mid-trib, and Satan is thrown out of heaven, and uh, and he's absolutely in a fury, and he begins to persecute Israel. But Israel is allowed to go into basically the, the uh, desert mountains, In this would be Jordan, present-day Jordan, that they are fleeing to the mountains, and it says they're helped by an eagle. Is that eagle the United States? It could be. This is the second possible reference to America in the end times. Now, the only problem I have with it is the Lord said to Israel concerning their exodus from Egypt, I bore you out on eagle's wings. And we know that when the children of Israel left Egypt with Moses, there was no eagle, there was no America that came and helped them. But this is a possible reference to America. Okay, so here's here's another question. Why, why isn't America more prominent in end-time prophecy? Because we're not prominent. Okay, I, I think that we're there in Ezekiel 38. I don't know about Revelation, but, but we're there in Ezekiel 38. Why are we not more prominent? Well, America is decimated by the rapture. And let me just give you some numbers here. In May of 2017, uh, Barna, the major researcher, did, did a study of how many born-again adults there were in America, okay, around 30%. This is the, and, and truly born again. 
uh, using the right criteria. He used the right criteria of measuring whether a person perceives Jesus, that their personal Lord and Savior, believes in the Bible, so on and so forth. Around 30%. There are 332 million Americans today. That would be around 100 million believers. Now, remember, I believe children under the age of accountability, believers' children, not unbelievers' children, but believers' children go with them in the rapture. I don't believe that God leaves our children here and our grandchildren here behind. I believe that if we're saved, our children go with us. So this would be born-again people with their children be around 100 million people. Imagine one-third of a nation disappearing in the twinkling of an eye. It, your army is gone. Your government's gone. Your, your systems are gone. And what, what would that do? That would, that would mean America just isn't really a, a factor in the end times. That's, that's really what it means. And the other possibility there is that we've been defeated by China, Russia, uh, Iran is threatening us nuclear with nuclear. I'm going to talk about that here in the next section. But uh, I don't believe that's true. I don't believe that we're going to be defeated by some other superpower because Jesus said it would be like the days of Noah and the days of Lot. I don't think there's going to be some massive nuclear exchange or massive war before the rapture. But the rapture itself is a devastating event. There, there will be nations of the world relatively unimpacted uh, by the rapture. But America will be definitely impacted, and I think that will decimate us and make us uh, not much of a player on the world stage at that point. So that's my answer. Uh, we are, I think, uh, mentioned in Ezekiel 38. I don't know about Revelation chapter 12, possibly, but I don't believe that we're a player in the end times because of the rapture. That's my answer. Now, we're going to go now. If you're not a subscriber, this next part of our program is for subscribers.